lane. I think he has a lot of easy targets he can just jump on. Lina is going to be fragile. She's a support. Same goes for Q on the Wyvern. I, I have a feeling Prepare EG are feeling pretty battle. confident going into this game. I feel like pretty good. They're up one game. I personally favor their draft, unless if CDC get off to a really good start and start taking towers with Dragon Knight. Yeah, uh, CDC yeah. actually we'll have a lot of things they can work with in the early phases. Because if they do get a good start, if you look for maybe the more aggressive DK would have been seen throughout TI5, which is with the Blink Dagger for the Dragon Knight. So you're able to jump in, you get that initiation, maybe Garda in combination with the Wyvern, where you have Curse as well as that Laguna Blade. Storm Spirit jumps in, you instantly control, you instantly nuke him down, and then the rest of the work has to be done by EG. Like, there's a lot of things that Cedar can work with, and then you've still got Aggressive's PL. Never underestimate his Phantom Lancer. EG have beaten it today, though. So they have. Keep in mind, they Aggressive did lose his first PL game. I will not deny that one. Battle. At the same time, with so much on the line, you can, you can succumb to pressure every now and then. Well, early laning phase is going to be uh, pretty passive again. Uh, primarily just because we're just waiting for the runes right now. Uh, but Samal, you say you should be having a very easy lane up against the DK. How does C-Deck now try and counter this? Do you rotate more supports in? They could look to gank him early on. Uh, but they can't focus on him too much because the then we get a situation begins. similar to game one where they're emphasizing the middle lane so much that EG just stack and stack the jungle a lot and some mail comes back that way. Um, in a way, the most important thing for them is to secure the PL, his farm, and make sure Clockwork gets level 6 so that they have some sort of counter initiation when Storm just jumps on his target. A Blink Dagger on DK and a Clock Hook are decent tools at dealing with some L in the mid game. Uh, it's not going to be easy for Dragon Knight. He's not even going to get a one on one lane, it's going to be a two and two. Uh. AUI is going to add a little bit more pressure up against Shiki in the early stages. And what's Garda really going to do against this as well? Like, he wants to come in close, but then he's going to be the one to get rip tied it up and just forced out of the lane. But we've got the bottle already arriving for the Dragon Knight, so this is fine. The DK is just able to farm with most, like, breathe fire, harass into Samel. It's not like it's a Templar Assassin. It's going to have defensive refraction charges that can avoid the damage as well. So that's fine, and both teams are looking to now do their pulls. The Observer Ward's already up for EG, which is also blocking up the pull point. This Sentry Ward is only millimeters away from actually getting the D Ward out. And on top of that, CDEC can't even pull the side camp because that's also blocked up by another Sentry Ward. There's just no way for CDEC to throttle this lane out and stop Universe from finding experience. And now you should actually probably... Like, what do you even do? You've, you've committed one of your Sentry Wards. How, how do you even stop this now? I think they might need to smoke and, <laughs> and look to rotate and gank the mid lane first. And then if that gank is successful, they can buy sentries and maybe go back up and pull. But this is definitely not a good start for them. Well, while PPD is able to do his pull on the bot lane. They actually and gave the other sentry to XZ. That's why they can't counter the, the observer ward. With one sentry, there is a risk you don't find it. And the one he has placed for the rune ward is all that again. Anything. Battery assault with PPD. Does he have enough life to survive this? He went chilling touch to start with, and fear is making his way over. And this rocket barrage will be forcing Clockwork out if he kept pushing it out. But at the same time, he realized now there's a regeneration rune upon him. Pick that one up and be good to go. Regeneration. And Dragon Knight got the top rune. This means no rune for Zamel this time. He's just going to bottle crow. At the same time, Samal has completely crushed this lane. He's 14-8 up against 5-0 on the CS. This Dragon Knight has found no space whatsoever. It is a very difficult lane for Dragon Knight. Uh, this is nothing out of the ordinary. Although, Shiki, in other matchups, he's played like Dragon Knight versus Shadow Fiend, I think, where he did exceptionally well. But Samal Storm is very difficult to play a melee hero against here in the lane, so... He's still, he's gonna be getting 9 CS here if he gets both of them, which it looks like he will. There we go. So he's 9 against 17. That is definitely not that good, but it's to be expected. Also with AUI putting a little bit of pressure in there with the Naga. A little nice bit of CS. Should also flag the fact that CDEC could decide to stack up inside their camps. So we've got a, uh, a triple stack inside the Dire Jungle, which will be flash farmed up later. And DK is able to do that one. Lena would obviously help out with Light Strike Array, and that'll give her her burst in levels. And you can see that Laguna Blade coming on a little bit earlier, and also the Dragon Knight progression of items coming a lot faster too. That's something the Storm Spirit can do, but currently there's there's actually one stack in the lane in in the jungle, so that's fine. Actually, there's two of them. 
So there's two double stacks available for, for evil geniuses. I want to keep my eyes on that one, considering what happened last time we had our storms to mail. And Universe has also managed to find a lot of levels. Both, both the Clockwork as well as the Earthshaker. Oh, we've got three on the Clockwork, four over on the Earthshaker. And in fact, Universe completes his Soul Ring as well. This will stop practically any push in the lane. And he's actually using the Fissure as well to block up his Creep Wave for the moment. It's actually not going to stop the balance of the lane. Because the catapult's still in there. This early game laning stage definitely favoring EG. It, it's what they want. If they can get a slow uh, laning stage where both their AA and their Naga Siren can pull and get experience, and the enemy team can't, and they have a favorable matchup mid, and they have free farm on fear, and they're getting a lot of experience on universe, this is this is exactly as planned for evil geniuses. And they still need to be careful, of course, as heroes start to go missing and. They don't really know exactly what the supports of the Dyer are doing, so Universe is going to stand far back, and now they do. Okay. They actually still have that ward, which is giving them so much information. If they smoke now, that would be a pretty big mistake. They obviously realize that is not the play to make right now, as their camp is still blocked. It has to be an Observer ward. They just pick it up on Garter, who's probably going to stack, and then maybe they will look to make their play. In. It's not like they're falling very far behind on gold. The experience is 1,000, which is decent. It's just the implications of the game, like, it's playing in the EP's hand. But now, but it's, it's what all that, uh, that, uh, first goal is gonna do for them. Like, we talk about it being a thousand goal, like, the network is a hundred percent, they got zero and the experience is just up for EG, but it's... Once you take out the quad as well as the trip stack, it's very simple for the DK then. Well, he's already got level six, so he can add pressure in towards the tower. There's things which, C which CDEC can do. I don't just have to sit in the back lines and wait it out until EG make a play before Samal with his level 6 tries to make a bit of a jump. Which is also possible, but another reason too why CDEC cannot fight. You don't have level 6 over on XE, so there's no clockwork hook shot up just yet. The leaner is in no position to get in and, and start any kind of engagement. She's still waiting for the DK to come up and flash farm. Then they can give the space to the Winter Wyvern so he can get up to his curse, his level 6. Alright, so we got, we got the double quad stacks ready to be farmed. This should be really quick and fast levels for Garda and really good money for CDUC. Right, they're gonna need to wait for the free fire. At the same time, for Evil Geniuses, they do their quad stack. They give it to Fear, actually. I thought they were gonna give it to some male, but he takes the, the other big camp, which I do believe was just a double. It's gonna push them both forward very nicely for some good experience here. And gold, of course. And what did Garter accomplish? He got level three from that stack. Okay, there's still a little bit of it left. He's gonna get three and a half. Radiance top tower is under and this attack. was only one of the stacks that CDEC prepared. So they can do the other one. The issue is uh, Shiki doesn't have any more mana for it. And it's double golems. That's gonna take them forever. They actually got pretty... Un they got pretty unlucky there on the RNG. Aggressive's finding good farm though. So this is the standard start that CDEC have been aiming for whenever they have their PL. They just want Aggressive to have a one-on-one -on -one in the safe lane. Their supports to move. Now because they couldn't pull, the supports came online later than they wanted. That's why the first blood is, is being delayed here. The question is if they're if they're happy with the situation. Like once again, it's pretty much dead even. No one's making big progress. You've just got that feeling that EG are more happy and more comfortable with a slow play game. We're used to see so much aggression out from CDC, yep. but it seems like throughout the series, the further we got into the series, the later they would found kills, the less effective their smokes were. And we've reached a point now where we don't even have a first blood seven and a half minutes in. Which is really uncommon for this tournament. Yes. Almost every single first blood has happened before the 10 minute mark for TI5. Everyone's been looking for that early aggression, that early movement. Most but of the time, we've even had three kills before. That's true. At least, like, like, sometimes even like seven or eight kills, which is a little unusual. But the, the only way it's going to happen this time around is if Samel gets this combo. He just bottled up a haste spoon. Goes up to full and also gets himself a regeneration rune. So he's able to run both of them at the same time. And a hero like the Winter Wyvern is practically free gold when you have something like this. He just needs to CQ moving around, which he doesn't. Actually, now he gets a quick glimpse of the wings. But diving underneath the tier one tower is always dangerous when you go up against multiple stuns. And the clockwork's rotated, so he has his level six up and running. 
Hook shot's available, and it looks like CDEC are looking to do something, but this Naga illusion could spoil the fun. Yeah, yeah they're going to run into a safe position before they use their first smoke. Still not using it, though. They're back a very long way. It's like they want to have Wy yeah, they, uh, they, they want to have Wyvern as well. So the perfect timing to have that Winter's Curse. Radiance top tower is under attack. Yeah, they're going to loop themselves into the mid at the same time. EG had exactly the same thought. It's going to be smoke on smoke. The smoke will break and he's going to have that call down. The fear is to ensure the kill. Meanwhile, aggressive fire. almost finishing up this tier one tower. Then EG just move themselves up to mail. Just have to jump off your sleeve, but they can just be happy with denying up the tower and having the first blood go out before the 10 minute mark. Yeah, that was really good timing. EG outnumbering them there, five to four. With PL just being busy in the in the top lane. He's gonna have very early boost of travel if he wants to buy them now. This is nine minute 30. At the same time, I'm a little bit surprised Q didn't try to get off the Winter's Curse at least and see where the, if they could make some, anything out of it. Like, just keeping it on cooldown here, sure, it's 110 seconds of level 1, but the chance that he'll be able to use it within the next minute and a half is probably not that high. And when the smoke broke, I guess they didn't have uphill vision, because then he could have caught a 3-hero curse. Correct. And EG just taking advantage of their superior positioning with that smoke rotation. The one observer ward they did have was sitting over the top rune, and that's the reason why they couldn't see it far enough over. So EG, it was the perfect time. The two smoked armies meeting up against each other. If CDEC were only... Do you dare say if they didn't wait for the Wyvern, they would have been there 10 seconds earlier, and they probably would have been able to get into a better position. We can judge everything for an armchair later on. Now Hawk shot from XC, gonna miss on, on Aoi. On Aoi. And then just back it up. Very, very simple escape. And aggressive move down the bottom lane. There's more fun to be had here and just want to let Fear feel comfortable. And he did buy those very early BTs with the classic Mango. Man, even Ichi, like stacks of stacks of always wonderful. But Fear's got three points up in flag down, rapidly approaching his fourth point now. And the Ancients actually failing on this stack. But there's already a lot of granite golems as well as lizards and black dragons inside that. He's gonna get a big injection of money. And if you look at the, the dire side, you have a completely free farming PL who has not contributed to fights yet. He's still a thousand gold behind the enemy mid laner. That's just the first two kills. I think Samel got the yeah, Samel got the first blood. He got an assist. They got all the stacks in the jungle, and this means that this investment from CDC Dyer's isn't really yielding anything just yet. It's basically playing a tie game. Dyer's structures where I, are fortified. I think EG have some decent counters to deal, but here we go. This is the attack. CDC we know. Yep. Dyer's they gather up and push this. They just moved from tower to tower. But EG saw this coming, so they just backed up. They didn't want to have a bar, have a bar of it. They left. They leave AUI to farm the top lane, so we Radiant's can try and get up to his level tower. six. Now has a little bit of pressure to hit. But CDEC are just so quick at doing attack. this that there is no reaction that can come from EG, which will result in a tier one tower dropping. And this is their power. I guess not even like the chip play you play with the Dragonite, where you attack at the tower, you slowly let it just tick out, while the other four create a little bit of troubles. Love that pop sound. The gyrocopter. When you got that many ancients, the more the more uh, creeps there are for the flat cat and the louder the sound goes. Just in case you didn't know what was going on, <laughs> you could definitely hear what's going on. Uh, Radiant EG gonna walk around the top of the observer ward. CDEC though are not in any real position where they can fight, but I am looking at that Dragon Knight with 1700 gold. And it does look like he's saving up for that blink dagger. It's got a blink, and then they'll be looking for fights and pickoffs. Now the question is, with that coming out, say, around minute 14 to 15, do they have enough fighting power? There is now a drum on aggressive. Why, but you didn't really want to do that. He threw down an observer ward, but it's in range of the sentry ward. So this observer ward's going to get dewatered out very quickly. Yeah, EOI's going to find it now. Yep. Are they going to give the money over to PPD? Wants to buy himself something nice. And Fear will pop up the rest of the camp while CDEC 
it's actually becoming really troublesome when they start losing observer wars like this they just don't have vision across the map right now there's only one dire observer ward which is in existence and it's sitting watching that top rune that's the only one they've got while eg have their wards a little bit more sporadically placed there's one that's watching the top rune and there's one that's watching the mid lane both this, are able to see the rotations. This has got to be one of the fastest bloodstones of the tournament, or at least the main event. Sumail gets it at, I think it was 13.35 or something like that. And of course, the reason he gets it so early is that he skipped the treads. And it just, that really shows you how EG are thinking in this game, right? If, if they wanted to fight, he would have gone for his treads buildup. But they're just playing a slow farming game. They're just looking at efficiency. Of course, bloodstone is... So good for Storm Spirit to just ramp up his farm. Even though you don't have that attack speed from the treads, it's still you can just use static remnant instead and clear things faster. Ichi's coming to fight. Clockwork. Gonna luckily walk himself up on the high ground, but unfortunately for the long run. And the Samal jump in and Samal has the ice blast from PPD. Very heavy commitment just for a kill over on a Wyvern. But Cedek might be happy to try to counter initiate. You got a hook shot also available. Dragon forms up, Laguna Blades are also available for the Lena. And the side lanes are pushing and, and AUI is still hovering around on that top lane. He can just TP Song of the Siren in if things get rough though. And maybe that's why CD can be a, CDX should be a little bit more cautious. Because that Song of the Siren will allow EG just to reset. But they can't just sit back, I think. Like they have their key items now. They have the Blink on Dragon Knight, they have the drum, as well as the travel on PL. This is when they want to fight. Yep, and they're going to. They throw, throw down the Sentry Ward, they checked up on the hill to see if there was an Observer Ward. And now we'll move into the Radiant Jungle. The only, only hero they saw was Fear Dyer's on the bot lane, as well as, again, attack. this Naga Siren, who's been giving all this free space in the world on the top, just to continue to farm up the Naga. Dyer's top they see tower you see need a different attack. option. They can try and have another play at mid. Because they know there's no one inside the EG jungle. God is just gonna break his smoke. And they'll just start pushing the lane now. Smoke Dyer's egg failed. Top tower is under Back attack. to the farm. And aggressive still got so much of that. He's starting up on his diffuser blade right now. And AUI kind of he's not gonna contest the Phantom Lancer. And PL can just keep moving everywhere. He's got these BTs, so he pushes aggressively as he wants to. And he's actually the rest of his teammates. He's managed to catch up to Samel. He was a thousand behind, if you remember. He's now ahead. He's yes. actually ahead. So. Dyer's middle tower. They are finding the farm that they want. Storm Spirit, long jump on bottom. They're going in for the clockwork. But then, you've also got the Storm Spirit that's been locked up by the Curse and Laguna Blade. And this is the peril you have as a Storm Spirit, where ZDEC. They've got the control of the burst damage to kill him off very quickly. And that's also Bloodstone Charges lost. He's down to six now after the initial game. Who ate a mango? Uh, it was the gyro. All right. He's, I think he's freeing up a spot. Yeah, we've got a Sal coming in and also the Sun. Dyer's top tower oh, is he still under has attack. a spot. Oh, well. Guess he was hungry. So... This ancient stack is probably going to be. I don't know if Fear wants to go Radiance for it again while it's a single, or if they're looking attack. for any sort of play in mid. But right now, EG are being a little bit scared here with CDC inside their jungle. They're, as a result, just going to pressure attack. out this bottom tier 2 a little bit with the remainder of their dragon farm on Cheeky. And just that one kill on Storm Spirit is actually really important. It's their first kill on the board, which is something for a little bit of momentum and just to keep the morale high, but. More than anything, he is the hero they want to shut down. Even if Fear gets really good farm on the Gyrocopter, I think with this amount of single target burst that they have, especially looking at Alina, who will probably transition into a, an Aghanim somewhere down the line, they might be able to... Oh, mid lane, with the Wyvern embracing himself, but now there's no regeneration, that Ice Blast. Is it gonna be enough to kill him off? No, it will not. So the Winter Wyvern will not shatter. What an aggressive play, though, for Samael to just jump into the tower like that with a nice class. If there was a counterplay available there from, say, a Dragon Knight, that could have gone very well. Uh, I don't know what heroes they had seen on the map. If they know the positioning, they can, of course, just go for it just to put some pressure. Have we even seen that Blink Dagger from the Dragon Knight Dyer's have top tower any is under attack. Because normally Dyer's you look for that, like, that Blink to Dragon Form into Dragon Tail Stun, and you can jump most heroes a long, long way out. 
He's using it to farm right now. It's increasing his Radiance middle tower quite a bit, under attack. of course. But yeah, it's not that effective just yet. I saw it on bottom. He has to manage to hit aggressive with this. He's also oh, going away aggressive. And now Dragon Knight. There's that move to Mal. What a hell of a amount of He's got himself a haste rune. The Lion Striker Ray not going to connect either. If it did, they may have, an, may have had enough time to attack into him. But Laguna Blade to finish the job. And this is when Aggressive has to start leveling up Doppelganger, which it looks like he is doing. Probably put the second skill point in it on level 12. And with the way these fights are going, Dyer's he needs the lower core. It is really, attack. really important. He almost got that defuser blade done. At the same time, the T1 tower was taken on top lane. PPD is just soaking up the experience there now. A lot of things on the opposite side of the map when you play the ancient map. That bigger radius for the ultimate. Considering CDEC can be pretty spaced out with their with their lineup, they need to be able to have that big range. But man, it, it really feels like though CDEC, like there's no range here. The experience is a little bit going the way of EG. There's nothing in the gold, but it's only like 4K. Oh, that's real trouble right now for Garda. The stun's gonna miss. He could turn around and try and nuke on Samal, but it's not gonna be any good. Samal will bottle back up again. They find a pick off the over on the support Lena. But EG still are not addressing the major issue, which is this Phantom Lancer. An under 20 BT drum diffuser blade up for a Okay, that happened. <laughs> Blink, Echo, Slam, and Call Down. And the Winter Wyvern just explodes. Dyer's and that's also going to mean a T1 tower in the mid. Dyer's structures are fortified. Yeah, they probably have the confidence to go for it. If, if fear gets jumped here, they can just they stand with the ult. They know it's clear. Easy we'll tier one. Dyer's Very easy tier one. Has fallen. We talk about all the farm over on aggressive, but when you've got also this gyrocopter walking around with SMY, home of the Dom, full treads and Aquila, he's definitely ready to fight. Samal's actually had enough of uh, CDEC to sit back. Takes up a little bit of the farm of the Dire Jungle and then just jumps down to bottom lane. The clockwork's around here, but CDEC are just trying to avoid all fights until probably this moment when they smoke up the street. Dragon Form is up. So is Laguna Blade. They could attempt to go in for Roshan, but without the Medallion charge, it's going to be a very, very long time. So instead, they try and kill up some out. The Observer's watching. And they've already gone into the, drag the DK Dragon Form. So we got to instantly blink. Stun, and they use the curse with Laguna Blade to mail! Oh. Almost able to jump in, but the universe right in the back of Garda. We've got the call out as well, this will instantly kill off the leader. But now the Hawk shot as well, XD's looking for a good line, and he completely walks off to the side. Universe is going to stun for the DK, he's doing a long, long work, especially when the splinter arrives in from Q. Two Radiant's heroes down for EG in this tier two tower, starting to get chipped away. Aggressive also BT'd himself down here, so they got more pressure. There was no TP on AUI, I think. He might have used it to go top to farm, but this is the hero for EG. In case he didn't have one, you absolutely want to have a TP on the Naga to go and save a situation Radiant's like that. Bottom tower is under they might have attack. figured when Samel gets jumped that they couldn't have saved him, but I think with a TP instant song there, they probably keep him alive. There's a couple of things which are falling apart. Samel just tried to TP to the tier one tower and accidentally canceled his TP. So he's all out, running up for Wyvern. I suppose this might make up for it. Radiant's Killing off the Winter Wyvern on the hillside. But Wyvern did get the Observer Ward down as he was dying. This would be very difficult for EG to know about. But more and more runes down. A haste rune in for Samel. And the Observer Ward was watching uh, Shiki moving around inside the Dire Jungle. Actually throwing up the ulti. That's only going to hit the creep wave though. Both Garda as well as Shiki have fallen back behind their tier 2 tower. He's just using it to scout with as well. Gets a lot of vision. Doesn't really find anyone, but not finding anyone is also information, of course. Then they know there's no one in the neighborhood right there. And the farming just continues in fear. You know, this is, this is kind of starting to remind me of, you know, Thor Open back in the day. Oh, no, 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 not, not the Sven era. We did not want to go back to the Sven era. Teams were just stacking their ancients, we just farmed the ancients for 30 minutes, and then whoever had Sven won, so... No Tidehunter era. That was... 
It's good times, man. Yeah. Good times. Things Great have, Dota. Things have changed a little bit since then. But they have. That was EG. That was they've, the era. They've at least changed the tempo. We're going to haste through and already triggered over, over on Storm Spirit, but it's the smoke movement coming out with the rest of EG. A CD you see is not in a bad position for this, they're just around the corner, including Hookshot. So Garda, as well as Shiki, they're not liking where they are, and actually Shiki just leaves Garda for dead. He blinks himself away to safety. He's thinking about turning of Garda with a Hookshot, and he gets the Guna Blade over on the map. He's practically out of bounds. I can't do it. the Dragon Knight with the Echo Tank control. It should be enough to fail. The curse is on him. Universe has to turn around. Try to get those teammates. This Universe is actually going to get a double kill. He's going to kill his teammate for Clockwork. Aggressive coming online. The Phantom Lancer, insanely difficult to deal with. He's going to double ganger himself in to find PPD. He'll pick up the kill and it'll be a two for three trade off. And the big one for EG losing the Storm Spirit now. That are four Bloodstone charges on Samael. This is still a very even game, but EG do manage to come out of that one kill ahead. Still with Samil on the sidelines, Aggressive should be able to increase his gap down to him, but of course Fear is still finding his own. And these fights closing in on a BKB, he's actually very, very close to it, just a few hundred away on the gyro. So at least he won't have his mana burnt out. He won't have his mana burnt, and the only real counter CDC he has is the Winter's Curse. Yes, they also have Hookshot, but someone has to kill Fear during the BKB. And a lot of PL damage right now is coming from the feedback from the Fear Blade. Oh, wow. Great. Great doppelganger. doppelganger there. <laughs> what a great. <laughs> Unfortunately for Universe, when he jumps in, <laughs> so there was time for Aggressive to not only see it, respond to it. Doppelganger's away, BT's up to the top lane, instantly Radiant starts flip push, while the rest fortified. of CDEC, they start attacking into the tier one tower. And while that BKB might be nice over attack. on Fear, a concern which should be there for evil geniuses is the fact they don't Radiant's really have enough damage fallen. to kill off this Phantom Lancer quick enough that their supports will survive. And maybe that's a, a different place we should be looking at it. The Storm Spirit's going to get an Orchid, that's going to be terrific, but this mana style is getting very close to completion for, for aggressive. So there's no control from the Storm on that front. A lot of it relies on basically Universe hitting the mark. Yeah. They only really have one carry who's good against the deal when he has the mantle. So that is definitely true. It's not the worst matchup we've seen PL in. Uh, we've seen it winning against Jarrow a couple times in this tournament. And the time it gets scary is when you're playing against Ember and Gyro or something like that. Then it can be really, really tricky, but it's definitely possible. PK, to Dragon make form, he's coming after PPD. Blink, start, free fire, a quick land for the win. Spacey for PPD to at least get the ult. The off universe wants to walk in. Dyer's your blink and echo attack. slam available. Radiant's with the BKP up from Dragon, there's attack. very little reason to use it. But with Storm Spirit having this fresh orchid, who can't see the see the EC by surprise. Throw out all answers. The PPD is not fear. They jump in. There's a curse to mount. Going in deep over on Wiley. Already using the ability, but he's going to fall. Dragon by no connection. No record slam for him. Universe will drop, and maybe even one after is going to be a double kill for Samel. The Song of the Siren allowing EG to reset Samel, not with a great amount of mana. The Song of the Siren is going to come back off Golden. They can control the clockwork. He will take the fall. But Aggressive is on the run. And we'll probably TP bottom to take up all the money there. Samael is causing them so much trouble. He jumps in on the Wyvern, it forces out a cape, and then they just go on to the Lina as well. Never got her Laguna Blade off. It just gets completely shut down in that fight. And you just know the whole time that if things aren't going the way EG are planning, they can just Song of the Siren like they did toward the end of that fight, just set up and finish it off. So they risked the fight very well, but they were ahead the whole time. And they do get the clearly better exchange there as Fear once again. Survives the fight, gets even more. He still hasn't died this game. So big for him, being 5-0-5 on the KDA. But I'm also looking down towards a PL. He's 2-0-2. And continues to add this split push pressure, which EG, they've got some mail to help deal with that. But again, we go back over what we talked about. There's no control and aggressive that Samel can use. He definitely causes havoc with the rest of CDEC. But this PL will continue just to BT split push this game out. Get more and more money. 
And that, for me, is, is still the biggest problem for Evil Genius is where do you go with this? Fear needs to have that damage dealing item. But in order to do so, he's got to drop either his TP scroll or sell, sell the Ring of Aquila. And some mail. That's going to be with the Hulk as well. They're going to fight some mail. The Colts burn. The Colts burn bought them a little bit of extra time. And with some mail down and no buyback, Roshan is a very, very juicy target here for CDEC. Yeah, EG are going to know they're going for it though. First of all, it would be pretty obvious from the lane situation, but they also have a good ward around the river area to see. But CDEC are moving in there now. I don't think EG are interested in contesting this 4 and 5, but maybe they can delay it long enough for it to be 5 on 5 if they Ice Blast and Fissure properly. There is uh, no hook shot. They're all together. PPD, here comes the Ice Blast for the door! Here from even need to buy time when they have superior vision and CDC has no idea what's coming. Universe was so convinced that they're so sure they're in there because of the vision show they're moving back in that direction that he just Dying blindly blink echo slams knowing that he should oh actually not blindly they already put down an ice vortex first actually so they didn't know for sure they were there mm -hmm. but even without the ice vortex I think he still would have gone for it because the only alternative is that fallen. CDC move toward the Roche pit and they actually don't go for it baiting expecting the EG1 to check it four and five which would Dyer's be very unlikely and then just going for it instead they just get being clumped up and so at this point I would also ask the question where were you, where were you off, where was the next vision coming into that fight? Going into Roshan blindly like that against a, a Shaker, Naga and AA lineup is very very risky indeed. They might just be feeling the pressure that they have to get something done with every single major kill they find. But that was not the play. The Roshan only, without vision is not good. The only upside for him was the fact that Aggressive was able to survive. So once again, he's not giving up much of this farm, but we're still looking at the Gyrocopter now being just under 900 gold away from completing up the full Butterfly. So he's looking fantastic. That's Fear. AUI was able to not only complete up the Mech, but he's also got the Medallion of Courage. So that Solar Crest could be coming up a lot sooner as well. The Earthshaker was able to afford up an entire Glimmer Cape. And it looks like a Lincoln Sphere build coming in for Samael. He's already got the Perseverance. Even PPD has his own Glimmer Cape to get in and out of trouble. EG have every at this point of the game. And CDEC, they need one hell of a fight to repair this damage of golden experience and keep themselves in TI5. They're the ones who are playing from a game down. They're the ones with all the pressure on them. And once Samel gets this Lincoln Sphere, the Dragon Knight Blink Dragon Tail is not going to have any effect. He's either going to block that or, say, a Winter's Curse. Pretty likely. Of course, there are other single target spells that can break the Lincolns, but I think it's really attack. good for him in this game. It's mainly just the Dragon Knight he's getting it against, too. Feels safer around the map, and pretty good chance he can use it twice in a fight. So. Oh, Man, that was. It's, it's going to be one of those moments. EG could have actually won TI5 with just that moment. That's how, that's how important that dunk was. And evil geniuses, all they gotta do is just roll Radiant's through the motions and is under attack. like still be very mindful about the split push because CDEC, if they want to, they can still keep dodging. Like Roshan was one of those special moments where EG knew where CDEC was going to. So you're able to fight him there. But this push coming to the there's no reason to take a 5v5 fight. Dyer's you can just TP aggressive to the top lane, attack. keep the pressure in, and you'll take the tier 1 tower, and yes, you cheat, but either you take the tier 2 tower and lose your own tier 2 tower, and you find these trade off games. And for another, just getting one for free. Yeah, this is easy tier bottom 1. Tower has and with fear with butterfly. <laughs> scared of a team fight. They have all their abilities off Dyer's cooldown again, apart from Ice Blast coming up to 20. CDEC might be happy to fight this. I don't think they want to at all. It's, it's just because the double damage room that's over on the Dragon Knight. So if EG falls it further Dyer's into the tier 3 tower, tower has fallen. then CDEC would be happy to take the engagement. Radiant's middle tower on the other hand, they would have to wait until she gets level 16. He's 100 XP away. He has two Dragon Knight now. That's pretty annoying for him. Bro, you really want to do have that Frost Dragon. He's got no creep waves, though. 
and Samel's already moved up to the top lane. It's a lot of PLs down here, but he'll use as much burst damage as he can with the Rams to get rid of it. There's that full Solar Crest now up for uh, AUI. And Lena is working with the Agony, but she didn't go for the four star to start with. <laughs> so she I can't help, but, sorry, I can't help but feel like AUI is playing techies, you know? It's like, he has one assist in 34 minutes in an 18 minute game. He's just been like, he's been playing on his own, like pushing out lanes, just casually farming, getting toward the key items with both the mech and the Solar Crest while the others have just been running around finding these kills. And he's had a really big impact because it's been difficult for CDC to push the towers when the Naga has always been in place to defend. Mm -hmm. So it looks like he hasn't done anything when you look at the kill death assist, but it's not true. It's, it's funny to how little kill participation he has had in this game. It felt like the Yeah. Then, then, you, then you'd have yourself some assist. Then you'd have Naga picked in the first phase of every game. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, snap. Tier 2 Tower is going to be dropping on the top lane for City. You see this their last out of tower. Dyer's top now tower going down. Fallen. And Evil Genius is inching closer to victory if they can make it. But the TP is coming back. And CDC are ready to find this one. Oh, sure He's got that Dragon Knight triggering the double damage rune now. I'm also watching PL with a large amount of money. In fact, he's just spending a little bit more of it. He just put a heart recipe. It's over on the courier. If he could find another 800 gold on the map, that's the full heart in for the Phantom Lancer. But at the same time as this is happening, I'm watching Fear moving to the, se to the secret shop, and he'll pick up... Actually, he's going a defensive item. He's building into the Satanic straight away before he builds into the Monkey King bar. Pretty sustainable fights. I think EG feel like they don't need damage right now, and even if they see the heart and peel, they still have a lot of ways to deal with it. They have Echo Slap, Ice Blast is pretty good. The spell damage of Flat Cannon and Call Down and everything, or well, the physical damage of Flat Down and Spell and Flat Down, whatever. They, they have a lot, okay? <laughs> they have a lot of AoE damage to still kill the illusions off, so I don't think an MKB or something like that is, is necessary yet for Fear. I think he wants to wait with it until when he sees the heart, he probably knows, okay, Aggressive's next item is going to be a butter. And that's when he wants to counter itemize with the MKB. MKB being the slightly cheaper item. Here we go again. Regeneration. Five man smirk by EG. On EG. Now some males are in the perfect position for this. He is going to see an infant rune, potentially going to jump down and grab it. And now they can curse him off. Look at Spear though. It triggers. That wasn't the curse of June, however. But the PL just runs himself down to EG. Taking it on a PS now. Now it's never aggressive. One trade off. Dragon Knight lucky to survive and he can't even get back. His TP is on cooldown. There's 32 seconds before the DK can TP back to base. He could lose his entire racks in that time. Dyer's bottom yeah, he tried to TP out earlier. Attack. This should actually be a link. I don't know if EG are aware of this, so they might secure any bit of pressure, but fear doesn't Dyer's care right now. He is definitely up front. Now the going in deep. Chasing out the kills. They just need a couple of kills. With the Wyman, he down for the card. Fear, fully wicked sick. They're gonna bring in Satanic as well for Fear while their push continues. And the tier 3 tower drops DK. Only now is he TP back and he's still gonna regenerate. The melee rack will drop. EG, how much respect do you give? The PL is up in 7 seconds. They're going to rotate themselves over the tier 3 tower. They do not want to overstick their welcome here. But they make sure they want them to keep on going with that fresh Satanic. Come out and fight. 
find some kind of collateral kills. But EG are turning tail and running for Dell. Universe is ready to turn. He's got extra play up. He doesn't look at the Call out of the Call out the fucking presented. Lost in position right now. He's going to embrace up by the middle oh. line of a few before the storm. DK about to drop. And Grace is on all survivor. DDC. It looks troublesome. It looks really, really bad for them. Aggressive on the run. Universe right behind him. They keep running out. But DK will play. EG. of the Immortal. They are the champions here in front of their home crowd. CDEC though, fantastic Dota from them. They played all the way through the winner's bracket. Huge problem.